What is this? On camera, takes you on a stunning visual journey of imagination and intrigue. From Southside's Liberty Bell to Memories of Vietnam. On camera, presenting landscapes created by the best independent film and video artists from Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio. This is the fifth of eight hour-long specials. Tonight's On Camera showcases the documentary. The opening piece, Frankie Capri, One Man Band, is by Pittsburgh filmmaker Craig McTurk. What attracted me to him in the first place was the fact that he was pretty much playing out on stage something that I had seen in a dream of mine, but had never been able to find. So suddenly I find him, and I wanted the film to be true to who, who he was and uh, who the people were down there. And uh, the neat thing about it, in my impression, is you could go to New York or you could go to L.A., but it'd be hard-pressed to find what you really have to come to Pittsburgh to see. I came to the conclusion that a lot of young young kids come to hear him. Yuns have never heard this type of music before. Yuns don't know what to do with it. So to Yuns, it's new. And anything that's new, Yuns like. And I think it's great. <laughs> My favorite songs are Italian songs. Uh, the, the ones I can't stand to play, there ain't too many of them. The ones I can't, well, there's, there might be a few I can't stand to play. I mean, like, well, I'll tell you about the ones I like. I like uh, Frank Sinatra, I like Dean Martin. I like uh, music from the 40s, 50s, especially the 50s, 60s. Um, the ones I can't stand, there ain't too much I can't stand. What do you think about uh, music like that? What I can't stand is really hard rock. That's what I can't stand, I but I don't play that. If you really hold me, all the way home I'll go on. The power is slowly dying, and in my head with still goodbye. My biggest musical influence has been myself, I guess, because <laughs> I, uh, I originally started on the accordion. From the accordion, I progressed to the keyboards. That's usually what I do now, and then it developed into a one-man band concept when I used to have a band back in 10, 15 years ago, but along came the disc jockeys and sort of killed all that, so I ended up going by myself and creating this routine. I think he has the talent to go very far, very far in this business. I really think he does. Um, and he's not quite as sure of himself as I am of him. And we're going to let the people be the judge. <laughs> but I'm right. And may all your Christmas well, it all started off with one. Uh, the little monkey that plays the cymbals. That was Joe. Then I ended up putting two or three or four more monkeys in on that. And then I got five antique monkeys on the right side. And then that's what started the whole group going. But this is just the original idea to create a lot of happiness. It's a terrific set, and uh, what, do you, what do you want to see happen to it, you know, maybe when you're not playing anymore? What do I want to see happen to it? Well, <laughs> I guess I'm going to keep it for memories. Uh, I would never get rid of it. I would never sell it. I enjoy looking at it. Anybody takes the time to put this up has to like it himself. What if, uh, what if somebody were to walk in and say, "Great set, we want it. You know, we want to take it to uh, take it somewhere. We'll give you a million dollars for it." Well, then they're going to take it somewhere. <laughs> for a million dollars, they're going to take it. <laughs> 
course, nobody's gonna take it for a million dollars. I'd like to buy it. No, <laughs> I'm joking. You're right, no. It's not for sale, but it is for a million dollars. <laughs> well, Frank does all of that. That's, that's his job. Actually, I just uh, kind of help when I can, if I can. And uh, if anything gets broke or messed up in the way of dolls, because I mean, you know, I can't feature Frank washing the dolls' clothes, you know. I do things like that and maybe touch up paint and uh, wherever I can help is what I try and do. He, uh, he, he's always in the market for stuff like that. I go to the flea markets and look and I don't see what he sees. He pictures it right there and I don't, uh, you know, I don't have the imagination he has. What I have is a little unusual. You don't see it everywhere. I guess that's the reason for the pickup. <laughs> Plus, they come in and they see something that they ain't gonna see anywhere else, you know? <clears throat> Me and my friends. <laughs> well, Luigi, actually, Luigi here is an Italian now. At first, he was Howdy Doody. So what I did is I put a crop of black hair on him, a little mustache, you know, and he seems to be happy with it, you know? But that's Luigi. But he actually was Howdy Doody. I like to eat in restaurants. I like to go for a drive in the country. I like to do anything but stay at home. I, I like to be on the move. I like to eat in different types of restaurants. I like food. Um, I enjoy going to a movie. I enjoy zoos, circuses, anything that has to do with amusement. <laughs> I like to go to Atlantic City. These are my Elvis Presley glasses. He lives. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that whole, uh, that whole Elvis thing? What, how do I feel about it? Farce or do you think I... No, no, I don't believe that. Yeah, he's dead all right. <laughs> That's only to sell magazines. Can you imagine a guy that has all his money in, in cars and things is going to pretend he's dead? I'll never believe that. <laughs> how about Graceland? Have you ever gone there? No. I've always wanted to, but I've never gone there. I would like to see that. Just have some guys like to try to force themselves like uh, Ronnie Millsap, you know, hey, they, uh, they force their voice to sound like him. This guy just naturally sounds like him when he, you talk to him. When you were a kid, a lot of kids look up to some figure or something. Did you look up more to uh, Frank Sinatra or Elvis? No, no, no. I've always loved uh, Mario Lanza. Mario Lanza was always my singer, beautiful singer. He, of course, he died young, too. He was more or less on the opera side. Great tenor. Oh, I love castles. That's my second hobby. Castles is a fantasy to me. Oh, I've seen a lot of castles in Italy, in Spain, in um, Portugal. I've seen some castles in the United States. I've seen some in Canada. I love castles. That's what this means right here. This is my Italian hat. Of course, it's seen a couple miles on it. I figure when I quit playing, I can always sell fruit. Huh? That's my Italian. We'll be here all day with the hats. Now, this is my uh, Frank Sinatra hat. You get uh, any propositions when you wear that hat? Any propositions? No, not off the bat, I don't. Why am I supposed to? You're telling me before how you you know you got a lot of uh, requests from uh, you know, from uh, women to do all sorts of stuff. They see you in that kind of light, maybe. Yeah. Well, uh, propositions probably come in forms of notes. <laughs> this is my Roaring Twenties hat, and if I'm running for office, <laughs> whatever you choose. But uh, getting back to propositions, I don't get that much propositions. Uh, I usually mind my own business. Since Frankie's been getting a lot more exposure recently, how far do you think he can go? Uh, you said you're... I personally? Yeah. I think he's got the talent to go clear to the top. I mean all the way. I really think he's talented. And I'm going to do my very best to see that I get in there. <laughs> How many years ago did you and Frankie meet? Four. It'll be four. He had me, I 
I got one leg. I got on the day and dance floor last time, and I uh, danced, and I did it again tonight. The only thing that I ever missed when I lost my leg was my dancing. And that's one thing that, when I get that, that, that stuff like he puts out there, that rhythm and that music and that beat, I a shit, I gotta get up there and dance, no matter what. I don't give a damn who looks at me and says anything. I don't care. Up dance. To him, he, he just he just moves with within you. Soul, whatever, you know? He makes you want to get up on the floor and dance. Tell me a little bit more also about how you were uh how you were raised in Italy and how you took up the accordion and whatnot. Well, uh, my mother happened to take me over when I was a little kid. That's where I first learned to play the accordion. Of course, uh, Italy's a very musical country. Uh, two out of three Italians either sing or play an instrument, one of the two. And um, I learned to play the accordion at the age of about eight. And I played the accordion all, most of my life up until about uh, the 70s when I started taking up the organ and accordion was going out. And uh, I used to have a band. I went out to lunch with a lady friend of mine. She was trying to deliver an Avon order to a barmaid at a little club called the Riverside. We went in. Uh, I didn't know anybody was playing. Well, she delivered the Avon order. Uh, we never did get to go eat because I heard Frank's music and I never left. <laughs> I stayed there all evening. Of course, that wasn't bad enough. I was so poor, I had to be born next door. Uh, how about the flags? You seem to have them. Well, the flags, they uh, depict that uh, there's one Italian flag over there and one to my right. That's for my mother and dad. I keep them in my memory, plus it's my Italian heritage. And the two American flags is my nationality, the greatest country in the world. Now, when I was here on Friday, you ended up... You like, played like, the Ita some Italian song, yeah. and then you played uh, with the Star Spangled Banner or something. Uh, God Bless America. Do you always end up with your shows? All the time, yeah. That's appreciation of the United States of where I've lived. Greatest country in the world. I feel as though I can help him in his career because he is a very sensitive person, a very sensitive person, and he is not as pushy and brazen as I am, and sometimes in this business you have to be, and that's what I'm for. <laughs> so that's what I hope to do. I like this music, though, very nice. I think he will make it high-class places. I think he will make more cash, you know what I mean. Where do you see yourself going in five years? Do you want to have a record out? And, and, uh... Not really. I don't, I don't really think of myself going anywhere. I, I, I'm not in that for that. I'm in this because I like it. I mean, if I stay right where I'm at, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I mean, I don't have to be in uh, Las Vegas making $10,000 a week, or I'm happy doing this. I mean, hey, if it comes, it comes. But if it don't, it, that's not my thing in life. My thing in life is to do what I love to do, and this is what I love to do, and I love to sing, I love to make music, I love people to see this, what I have. I like to create an atmosphere of happiness. That's my goal in life, not to be rich and to actually profit from what I'm doing here. But like I said, if that comes along, it comes along, but that's not my goal. I mean, if I stay here for the rest of my life, it's just com I'm completely satisfied. I'm not really looking for the big time. I'm happy here. I think he's great. Well, I've been down here probably bartending about a couple months now. I, I, I think every week I sort of enjoy him a little bit more because he gets more into the crowd. I'd like to see Frank achieve than what Frank does. So this is where it's kind of, you know, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> That's about the best I can do right now. <laughs> Have you 
you ever seen anybody else with a similar act around? Never. Never. This, this is just all my own concept. Yeah. I've never seen it yet, no. So there's sort of a tension between what, you know, how far you, you see him as going and how far he wants to go? Um, yes and no. Um, Frank feels that he's past the age of making it big. Okay, I don't. I think age is no factor whatsoever. So you think he could go another 10 years or 15, Easy. 15 years? Okay. Easy. Do you think it helps a lot that uh, you and Frankie are both Italian and uh, have that in common? Well, I like all races of people, but let me tell you this. As far as, far as I'm concerned, I always say this, there's only two kind of people in this world, Italians and people that want to be Italians. <laughs> no, I'm very proud of my heritage. I really am. But uh, all nationalities are beautiful. What do you think people in Sicily would think about your set if they were able to see it? Well, I, I think I'd take first prize. A pound of spaghetti and a can of sauce. Out of 100 people that see Frank, I think we have an average of about 80 that really like him. And I think this is way above any averages for anybody else. Because if you get 30%, you're a success. <laughs> And that's just me. Of course, I'm prejudiced. <laughs> when you hear this guy with his, you know, his music, that I can only sit there but so long and keep my hands going, but my feet start going, and I can't sit on my ass too long. I gotta get up there. I don't tell you the truth. If I didn't have my daughter here, I'd ask my son. And to tell you the truth, if he wasn't here, I'd ask you. I'd ask you.